Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to remind everyone to check out our affiliates at Harry Tarantula and TCG Player. And you can help support the channel by following my socials or becoming a patron. Links to all of these are in the description. Let's take a look at what's in the workshop today. Viewer Wesley Hawker writes, I was hoping you could help me with this Kestia the Cultivator deck, revolving around landing efficient creatures then suiting them up. I've been steadily adding new cards and trying to get more efficient, but the deck just doesn't spark the joy it once did. Please help. First, Wes, thanks for submitting your list. Kestia is a very unique commander in that she's both a creature and an aura. You can either cast Kestia as a body or bestow her on a creature as an aura, and when the enchanted creature dies, she'll return to the battlefield as a creature herself. Double value. That's a big issue with aura-centric decks. Often they open you up as the player to two for ones or more. What that means is that an opponent can use one of their cards to remove two or more of yours. Simply kill an enchanted creature and everything you've put on it goes to the graveyard too. I'll also want to take a look at what new goodies we have for this archetype out of Modern Horizons 2. There are a few pieces of great support for this deck type. So let's take a look at your existing list. First, we have all of the amazing enchantresses in your list. Core Spirit Dancer, Citizen Champion, Mesa Enchantress, and everything in between. It's these cards that trigger on casting an aura or enchantment that are going to be your best advantage engine. Keep your hand full by drawing one, two, three, or more cards on every spell cast. Combined with your enchantments that you can bounce like Flickering Ward, and you have a value engine online. I would not change this at all. I also really like some of the creature-based ways you have to protect your board. Dauntless Escort and Selfless Spirit are both good additions to any creature-heavy deck that can stop your team from dying. Then we have our cost reducers. We covered your value engine, but let's talk efficiency engine. Danitha Capuchin, Starfield Mystic, and Herald of the Pantheon all assist in making your enchantments cheaper. And when you have some that cost 5 or 6 or 7 mana, and they reduce the cost of your commander, well, these cards are all fantastic includes. I also like the cheeky Sionia, Captain of the Pileus, plus Shielded by Faith combo. These two end up making you infinite soldiers, so if you're okay with a two-card combo like this, it's certainly efficient. Good thing these soldiers don't have haste. It gives your opponents a chance to get rid of them. The way this combo works is, every time you target a creature with Shielded by Faith, Sionia, Captain of the Pileus, triggers to make you a soldier. You then move Shielded by Faith over to that new soldier, triggering Sionia again, starting a loop. You break that loop whenever you want, but it gives you a near-infinite number of soldiers to play with. Again, they don't have haste, but this is an instant army with two cards. So looking at your list, what kind of flummoxed me is that you've leaned so hard into enchantments you haven't included any artifacts. This is leaving your ramp very lacking. You do have a few pieces of enchantment-based ramp like Wild Growth and Utopia Sprawl along with Glittering Frost that help ramp and trigger your enchantresses. But outside of these land enchantments you have, Cultivate and Kodama's Reach and that's really it. No dorks, no rocks, and with only 35 land, I see this being a real issue for your consistency. In addition, I see that you're low on interaction. Imprisoned in the Moon, Darksteel Mutation, and Kenris Transformation are all decent single-target removal pieces. You've got Nature's Claim and Heliod's Intervention to deal with artifacts and enchantments, and Shatter the Sky and Winds of Wrath as board wipes. That's a total of eight pieces of interaction in the whole deck. In my opinion, that's pretty light, and if that works for your meta or playgroup, fantastic. But you're in blue, I'd run at least one or two counter spells that aren't on bodies. Now additionally, there are some other good enchantment-based removal options like Lignify or Song of the Dryads. Both would trigger all of your enchantress effects and are good options for dealing with troublesome permanents. We could also look at some of Blue's non-enchantment-based removal like Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, or the new Suspend out of Modern Horizons 2. All of them are one mana, and all of them are ways to deal with creature threats to your game plan. Speaking of Modern Horizons 2, there are a few new pieces we really want to find room for in the deck. First is Sithis Harvest's Hand. The newest enchantress on the block, Sithis is everything you want for only two mana. A body. 
a card draw engine, and a life gain engine. The fact that she comes down at only 2 mana is perfect as she fits right into your game plan. And she is an enchantment herself, triggering all of the effects you have in play later in the game. Then we have Sanctum Weaver. This new mana dork is an enchantment creature and is a Sarah's Sanctum on legs, making you any color of mana equal to the number of enchantments you control. In a dedicated enchantress deck like this, that's going to be a lot and will certainly help boost your mana generation concerns. Lastly is Resurgent Belief. This mana valueless card has suspend 2 for 2 mana and is a replenish, meaning it returns all enchantments from the graveyard to the battlefield. That is an amazing effect that doesn't cost you the dollars that the actual replenish would. The last card I'd recommend is Sigil of the Empty Throne. This enchantment is inevitability. Each enchantment you cast starts making you bodies and that's exactly what you'll end up needing. With an even split of creatures and enchantments in the deck, having something that makes you more of either is what's going to catapult your game plan into later turns. For upgrades, I'd recommend enchantments that help your mana out like Smothering Tithe or Monologue Tax. The initial casts trigger your enchantresses and they help you recover later in the game by consistently producing treasure tokens. If you're feeling saucy, the original Replenish from Urza's Destiny, a reserveless card, is over $130 but does provide a way to rebuy everything from your graveyard. Just be sure to spend wisely. And the only Enchantress you're really missing from the list is Argothian Enchantress. She's the smallest Enchantress but can't be spot removed thanks to Shroud, drawing you a card on each enchantment cast. But she is a pretty penny thanks to Boggles being a popular modern deck. So let's take a look at our list. I didn't put as many ramp pieces in as I had anticipated, just making room for Soul Ring and Sanctum Weaver. As the curve of the deck remains low and your enchantresses help make churning through new cards really easy to improve your consistency. With your commander and 8 other creatures in your deck drawing you cards, I think consistency is the name of the game. Cast enchantments, draw cards, profit. Perfect. Be sure to let us know in the comments how you've changed your deck, Wes, and thank you for submitting it. For everyone else, let us know in the comments how you would continue to improve this deck. Until next time, folks, good luck and have fun. And of course, a shout out to everybody who supports the channel, all of our patrons. I couldn't do this without you. A special shout out to our Lodestone Golems, Ben Frain, Sterling Lankford, Will Briggs, Ben Davis, David Neri, Corey Whitaker, and Snipes, and our Metalwork Colossi, Austin Charlotte, Charles Olson, Matthew Chandler, Pulsating Kiwi, Jim, Raphael Lum, Wyatt M, Timothy Conan, Matt Oaks, and Stephen Dunn. Thank you, all of you.